Okay, let's go ahead and call this meeting to order. Welcome. Let's begin with the flag salute. We stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. All right, good morning. Welcome, everyone. It's important for Placer County to conduct our business to ensure essential services for our citizens. We're doing everything we can to facilitate residents staying at home and physical distancing. We encourage the public to engage in the process. With that in mind, our public comment for this meeting will be offered in person and through a remote virtual process. Citizens who wish to comment today should be prepared to comment via the Zoom platform. To join virtually online, click on the link on the Planning Commission homepage. Please make sure your microphone is muted. You may also call in using our toll-free numbers to hear the meeting at 888 888- 788-0099 or you can call 877-853-5247 and please enter the webinar ID, another number for you, which is 948-8937-2652. Please press star six to mute yourself. If you would like to make public comment virtually, please raise your hand with the hand icon at the bottom of the page. If you are calling in, please press star 9 to raise your hand. Please be prepared to speak at the time I open public comment for the specific item you would like to address, which may include public comment for matters not on the agenda, or a consent item, or a timed item. If attending in person today, We kindly request that once you have commented on your item, return to your seat or leave the hearing room from the exit only door to accommodate for physical distancing and allow for others to provide in-person public comment. Each commenter is entitled to three minutes of comment time. Please thank you for your patience as we work to preserve the safety and health of all meeting participants and that each citizen who wishes to comment has the opportunity to do so. It just as a note, um, I'm stepping in for Commissioner Howie. He's not able to be in person today. He is online, uh, and so he's here, but I'm acting chair. Uh, let's go ahead and move on to the planning director's report. So, EJ? Uh, before we do that, if we oh, could, take real roll. quickly, Chair, I, I would just like to yeah. mention one clarification on the web ID for the Zoom meeting. That web ID number should be 948 948- Zero two two five four eight six three. So once again, nine four eight zero two two five four eight six three. Okay, great. Let's take a roll call. Good morning, Mr. Cannon. Here. Mr. DiMatte. Here. Mr. Johnson. Here. Mr. Woodward. Here. Mr. Herzog. Here. Mr. Sevison. Here. Mr. Haugie. Here. Thank you. Okay, let's go ahead and move forward with the uh, planning director's report. Good morning. Thank you, Chairman, members of the commission, E.G. Avaldi with the Planning Services Division. Uh, it's It's been a busy week this week. We've had two Board of Supervisors meetings. We've had a, a couple of Municipal Advisory Council meetings. And, of course, you know we have today's Planning Commission meeting. Uh, so Monday, uh, the Board of Supervisors uh, did take up the Hidden Falls Trails expansion project. Uh, they did approve the project. It was on a three to two vote. Uh, Tuesday, the next day, uh, they took final action on the Crowley variance and approved the Crowley variance. Uh, the last Planning Commission meeting, your commission took action to approve the AT&T cell tower. Uh, that uh, project was appealed to the board on Monday. So that will be scheduled within the next 90 days uh, with the Board of Supervisors. And then also on the calendar for the board, the Matranga variance appeal, uh, that's scheduled for April 27th. Excuse me. Uh, Let's see, Municipal Advisory Councils. uh, So most of the MACs uh, 
uh, are beginning to meet again. Uh, most of those MACs are meeting virtually. I think the only one that's not meeting virtually is the rural Lincoln MAC. I think that meeting's in person. Uh, there were two municipal advisory council meetings last night, uh, the Sheridan MAC and the West Placer MAC. Uh, interesting, the West Placer MAC, about halfway through the meeting, uh, power was lost to most of the <laughs> West Placer area. So uh, we had to... Uh, they're going to be continuing that meeting, I believe, to this coming Monday uh, so they can uh, take up the items that were on that agenda. Uh, you know, as you know, the MACs provide recommendations to the Planning Commission and the Board of Supervisors, uh, so we'll be bringing those, uh, start bringing those recommendations back to your commission as projects come forward. For Planning Commission, uh, the next meeting is March 25th. The Baseline Commercial Center is on that agenda. Uh, that's a commercial project located on the southeast corner of Baseline Road and Wallerga Road out in West Placer. A uh, combination of retail buildings, uh, fast food restaurant, gas station uh, on the west side of west side of the county. And then we also have items for the April 9th uh, Planning Commission <clears throat> meeting. That's when uh, you'll be asked to take action on the housing element. So that concludes my report, unless there's any questions. Let's see, what, what did you say it was on the 9th? Uh, the housing element update. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Not seeing any other questions from commissioners online or in person, so thank you for that. I will now open public comment for any matters not on the Planning Commission agenda. Let's just wait a minute for that. Anyone online? Okay, with no other comment or need for public comment for items not on the agenda, we'll now move to the consent agenda items. Would any commissioners like to remove any items from the consent agenda? Okay, let's ask uh, people from the public. Any of the public, would you like to remove any items from the consent agenda? Anyone? Okay, so we can move to consent agenda approval. Motion for approval, Commissioner Cannon. Second. Okay, we have a first and a second. Let's do a roll call, Sue. I'm sorry, I didn't get the second. Howie. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Okay, I have a first for Mr. Cannon, a second for Mr. Hauge. So a vote for Mr. Cannon, please. Yes. Mr. DiMatte? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Woodward? Yes. Mr. Herzog? Yes. Mr. Sevison? Yes. Mr. Hauge? Yes. Thank you. Okay. okay, we're going to move on to our first and only timed item, a public workshop on the health and safety element update. Members of the public may now raise their hands, press 9 if you're calling in, or star 9 if you're calling in. Okay to begin queuing in for public comment, uh, which will not begin until the, the item presentation is complete. Uh, but uh, Clayton, will you remind us of that number? Because I don't have that number here. Sure. Uh, the number for calling in is 877-853-5247 or 888-788-0099. The web ID is 9480225 Okay, thank you so much. And Angel Green, senior planner, will be presenting this item. Good morning. Uh, thank you, commissioners. Uh, again, my name is Angel Green. I am a senior planner with the Placer County uh, Planning Division. And I am joined here today uh, with Eli Crispy, one of our consultants, uh, with PlaceWorks, who's assisting us with the preparation of the health and safety element update. And he's available by phone. Shall there be any technical questions that I'm not able to address? So I'd like to start first with an overview of the health and safety element. The health and safety element identifies potential health and safety concerns in the unincorporated areas of Placer County. It outlines the goals and policies 
uh, to help protect the community. State law requires that city and county governments prepare safety elements as part of their general plans and to include specific information and policies about natural and human-made hazards and to maintain, implement, and regularly update these elements. Recent state or changes to state law require that the cities and counties review their safety elements when their housing elements are being updated at least once every eight years and to make updates to the safety element to include new information and comply with new state requirements. And as you are aware, the Placer, uh, the Placer County is currently updating its housing element. Updating the health and safety element also allows us to bring together existing documents and plans that have been recently adopted or amended, such as the Placer County Sustainability Plan, the Local Hazard Mitigation Plan, and the Community Wildfire Protection Plan. State law also requires that the Board of Forestry review the adoption or amendment of a jurisdiction safety element as it release, relates to uses of land and policies in state responsibility areas, as well as very high fire hazard severity zones that protect life, property, and natural resources from unreasonable risks associated with wildfire, including methods and strategies for wildfire risk reduction and prevention within those areas. The Placer County's health and safety element uh, was last updated or adopted rather in 2013 and contains the following hazard sections that you see here. They include seismic and geologic hazards, flooding, fire and airport hazards, emergency management, public safety, hazardous material as well as avalanches and public health. Recent changes to state law require that the health and, self, health and safety element uh, also contain information related to policies to help protect the community from climate change and to include emergency evacuation planning. In response to new changes in state law, the health and safety element update proposes the following sections to provide consistency with state law and greater protection for Placer County communities. Climate adaptation section includes these new hazard sections. Those include drought, extreme heat, severe weather, agriculture, and forestry pests, but also includes new information relating to emergency evacuation planning. Changes in state law as it relates to flood hazards require the safety element update to include flood mapping, identify responsible agencies for protecting against these hazards and ensure continued coordination, develop policies to minimize and risk, or minimize the risk rather for new buildings and essential facilities. Changes in state law that address fire hazards require the safety element update to include updated fire mapping and mapping uh, showing the locations within state responsibility areas and high fire hazard uh, zones, identify responsible agencies for protecting against these hazards and ensure continued coordination, develop policies to minimize the risk for new buildings and essential facilities, and also identify residential developments that are located in hazard prone areas with evacuation constraints. New laws relating to climate adaptation and resiliency require the preparation of a vulnerability assessment to show the risks from climate change impacts, to develop adaptation and resilience goals, policies, and objectives to protect the community, to implement strategies to increase community adaptation and to build resilience, and to incorporate those goals and policies into the general plan uh, no later than January of 2022. Placer County did complete a vulnerability assessment 
that has been prepared in compliance with state requirements. The vulnerability assessment, which serves as an appendix to the health and safety element, was prepared as part of the Placer County Sustainability Plan. The vulnerability assessment identifies the climate-related hazards in Placer County and how susceptible populations and assets, sometimes referred to as sensitivities, uh, may be impacted by these hazards. A total of 11 climate hazards and six different population and assets, or again, sensitivities, uh, were analyzed in this assessment, as shown here on the screen. The vulnerability assessment has been updated as part of this process. It includes minor adjustments to incorporate new data and information that has become available since the assessment was first prepared in 2018. So we do have new information as it relates to the public safety power shutoff events, new drought data, as well as new uh, vulnerabilities that have been seen in the Tahoe Basin. So in terms of outreach and stakeholder meetings uh, to date, uh, public engagement efforts actually began back in 2017 as part of preparation of the sustainability plan where staff met with more than 28 stakeholders, special districts, and interested parties, including each of the municipal advisory councils, all throughout the planning process in order to seek public input on adaptation strategies to address climate vulnerabilities, uh, many of which informed many of the proposed changes here that have been incorporated into the health and safety element update. More recently, and in conjunction with the housing element update, outreach efforts also included a flash vote by email and text to interested parties. We also had a virtual public workshop during the summer of 2020. For stakeholder meetings, staff have met with key stakeholders. Those were held in 2020 and early 2021, specifically on the health and safety element update. County met first with Cal Fire to discuss the regulatory requirements to be considered, as well as the review process that's required by the Board of Forestry. Staff also met with the Placer County Transportation Planning Agency uh, and Airport Land Use Commission staff to discuss the necessary steps to determine the health and safety elements updates consistency with the Airport Land Use Compatibility Plan, or the ALUCP as well as the general plan. Staff is currently in the process of meeting with the Municipal Advisory Councils to inform them of this process. And last, as you see here on the screen, we do have a dedicated web page that has been created to promote uh, public participation through online activities uh, related to the health and safety element. All right, so the proposed health and safety element uh, has undergone significant uh, format changes since the, ask, the last update in 2013. And it's organized into the following sections. We have an introduction section that describes the purpose, the scope and context, regulatory framework, a relationship to the Office of Emergency Services, and relationship to other documents. The existing conditions section outlines the existing hazardous conditions and other public safety issues in Placer County. Also includes hazard profiles. We have the goals and policy section, which I'll go into a little bit more detail here in just a second. Finally, we have Appendix A, which contains the findings from the vulnerability assessment update that we just did. Formatting changes include uh, new background information that I've just mentioned, but we also have new diagrams, figures, and mapping. We have the elimination of redundant hazard sections, and this would relate specifically to the emergency management and public safety hazards. Those have now been combined into one section. Last, we have the reorganization of the implementation program sections in order to renumber the programs in a continuous numbering format. This table here indicates the total number of goals, policies, and programs for each of the hazard areas and demonstrates how many new goals, policies, and programs are recommended. In total, the proposed uh, health and safety element update includes uh, 19 uh, goals, 
114 policies and 82 implementation programs. So I'd like to briefly cover the key revisions that have been included in this health and safety element update. Uh, first, starting with, with the revisions that have been made based on recommendations received from our key stakeholders. I'll then cover a few examples of the revisions that we're proposing to ad uh, address state uh, regulations. And please do refer to attachment B of the staff report for the full text changes. We'll begin first with PCTPA, the uh, Placer County Transportation Planning Agency and the Airport Land Use Commission. Uh, all general plans, including the health and safety element update, require an ALUC consistency determination and must be referred to the ALUC for review. Revisions made based on feedback that we received from PCTPA staff in order to achieve consistency with the ALUCP include for the health and safety element update, we have new discussion of state law requirements and the purpose of the ALUC, including planning for compatible uses around airports. We have an update to goal 8D to expand the minimizing of the exposure of public of the public to airport hazards. We have an update to program 8B1, which makes note of coordination with PCTPA on discretionary entitlements for consistency with the ALUCP. We have a new policy, 8D4, which speaks to the revisions of future airport development plans. A new program, 8D2, which clarifies the county's review of projects located in the airport influence area. Also to uh, create consistency with the goals and policies of other sections of the general plan. Uh, those revisions include updating uh, the ALUCP to reflect, or rather an update to reflect the new ALUCP in the introduction section of the general plan. We have minor text changes uh, to include all applicable airports. That's in the transportation and circulation element, or section three of the general plan. Uh, for part one of the general plan, we have subsection four under the land use circulation diagrams and standards, uh, public facility buffers, where we're looking at proposing additional notes to include reference to the aircraft overflight combining district and compatibility buffers. For the Placer County Zoning Ordinance, we're looking at adding the applicable airports to section 17.52030 for the aircraft overflight combining district, as well as additional text to subsection four, other regulations for consistency with the general plan goals and policies. Staff is currently working with PCTPA staff to bring forward the health and safety element update to the ALUC board in late May uh, to receive the ALUC consistency determination. I've also made a note here that I've got some corrections I need to make in my track change document to make reference to the uh, correct adopt, adoption dates for each of those ALUCPs. So I don't know if you caught that, but I've made a note of that correction that's needed. Moving on to CAL FIRE, CAL FIRE provided an early assessment of the county's existing safety element. A copy of that review is provided in attachment C of the staff report. Recommendations that were received from uh, CAL FIRE uh, recommend that we add additional information, policy revisions, as well as new policies, and implementation programs necessary to comply with state law. For emergency evacuation, Senate Bill 99 requires the county to identify residential developments in hazard areas that do not have at least two emergency evacuation routes. AB 747 requires that evacuation routes be analyzed for their capacity, their safety, and viability under a range of emergency scenarios. As recommended by CAL FIRE, the health and safety element update includes a number of maps and figures, mapping of the locations of high fire severity zones, as well as figure 13, which identifies the location of residential neighborhoods lacking that second emergency access route. To address the requirements for AB 747, a new section titled Constraints has also been added to the Safe and Healthy 
<laughs> health and oh goodness, the health and safety element. Excuse me. Um, and, and this here identifies the factors that constrain the protection um, of the public. Uh, it also includes the unpredictability of disasters, constraints to routes that would be used as evacuation and emergency access, individual precautions, and economics that also may play a factor. We've also added policy 8C112, requiring the county to identify at-risk and critical care facilities in fire hazard zones with inadequate access and fire evacuation routes and to implement a plan consisting of evacuation routes and shelter-in-place plans. CAL FIRE also recommends that the safety element include details of the Local Hazard Mitigation Plan, or the LHMP, and to provide a link to that plan consistent with AB 2140. Consistent with these recommendations, the Health and Safety Element update contains a detailed discussion of the county's multi-jurisdiction LHMP, as well as modifications to program 8EB, or rather 8E5, to update the LHMP every five years in accordance with regulatory requirements. Additional comments received by CAL FIRE relating to the goals, policies, and programs that have been added into the safety element address concerns relating to avoiding or minimizing the wildfire hazards associated with new land uses, develop adequate infrastructure if a new uh, development is proposed in an area identified uh, within the state responsibility areas or very high fire hazard zones, and working cooperatively with public uh, agencies responsible for fire protection. The health and safety element update also includes a number of policies to address climate adaptation, which addresses government code section 65302, section G4B. Proposed policy 8I2, by way of example, demonstrates the incorporation of the county sustainability plan into the safety element necessary to create a more resilient community that can adapt to the hazards created or exacerbated by climate change. Proposed policy 8C19, recommended by staff for the fire hazards section, and if I may read here, for parcel maps and tentative subdivision maps located in high or very high fire hazard zones, the county shall require the undergrounding of new electric utilities for all projects located in moderate fire hazard severity zones or non-residential projects in high or very high fire hazard zones, the county shall consider all feasible fire preventative measures during environmental review. All projects shall conform to the utility requirements as specified in the applicable community or specific plan, as well as applicable design standards and guidelines. The goal here is to minimize or reduce wildfire impacts for new development projects uh, that are proposed within fire hazard zones. All right, so next steps here. Uh, currently, right now, the health and safety element update is out for public review, and that period closes on March 27th. The next uh, month, staff is also going to be holding a workshop with our Board of Supervisors. We are currently meeting with the uh, municipal advisory councils, and we expect those to continue through April. We expect CAL FIRE to finish their review and meet with the Board of Forestry no later than May 26th. For the airport land use compatibility plan and consistency determination, we expect to have that completed in May. Environmental review, we should have wrapped up by the end of March. So after completing uh, these steps here, Considering all public comment that may be received, as well as any feedback that we may get from your commission today and the board next month, staff will work with our consultants to prepare the final draft and to have that ready and back to your commission for deliberation by midsummer for a recommendation to the Board of Supervisors. So that concludes my presentation, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Angel. I appreciate that. Um, Bring it to the commissioners here for any questions for Angel or staff. 
Anything? Okay. Uh, anything online there? Just checking in with my commissioners online. Okay, not seeing anything at this point, Angel, we'll, we'll let you know if some, some things come up. Go okay. ahead. Yeah, I'm, yep, moving to opening public comment. Uh, and we'll see if the public has any comments here in person or online. Not seeing any public interest to comment, we'll close public comment and then we'll move it to a discussion with the commissioners. Um, so any discussion needs to happen? Comments? Yeah, from a public disclosure perspective, I spent a fair amount of time talking to Angel about this, and, uh, and I found their explanation to be very good, and, and the briefing was excellent. So thank you. Wonderful. Yeah, I think considering, you know, where we're headed uh, with evacuations and wildfire, you know, I think it's important for us to make this a priority uh, with our mitigation and uh, and so appreciate these efforts in the county as we try to improve what we do in our practices and making people safe and really thinking of hazards before they happen. So thanks for your good work in that. Um, I think at this point, uh, it kind of wraps up our presentation. Uh, so I'll go ahead and adjourn the meeting. Thank you.